Hi, I'm Roger. I'm Cindy. And I'm Brennan. And we're Changing, Changing the View. view. Welcome back to Changing the View. Today we're in the beautiful state of Utah. We have been trying now for two or three weeks to get a video together, but with Brennan's schoolwork and us being the teachers, it's been a little difficult to get that done. So we're about four or five weeks from our last video. Our last video was in Crater Lake uh, National Park in Oregon. Beautiful, beautiful place. Make sure you check out that video on Marks and Parks with Brennan. All these places that we're going to be naming in the video, our, our visits, uh, we feature uh, these places on another website or another YouTube channel, Marks and Parks with Brennan. We'll have that link uh, posted at the end of this video. Make sure you check that out if you haven't. But when we left um, Crater Lake, we went to the Oregon coast. Everyone said, make sure that you don't miss the Oregon coast. It was beautiful. Um, a lot different than the coast that we're used to seeing, just white sandy beaches back where we are. And with the Oregon coast, it was, it was quite a bit different. Make sure you go and check that out. From there, we went to Crescent City and visited the Redwoods National Forest. We had some special visitors come for that one, and we would like for you to check out that video as well on Marks and Parks. So after uh, Redwoods, uh, did you name San Francisco? Not so Redwoods. Okay, after Redwoods, we went to uh, San Francisco. Now, I'm, I'm not, I think the older I get, the worse I get, but I'm not big on uh, big cities and lots of people and traffic and just the busyness of the cities. But uh, we, we wanted to see San Francisco, we were that close. So we, we paid a visit to San Francisco. Uh, we have a video for that as well, go check it out. drove to Groveland, California, where we visited Yosemite National Park. It was beautiful. Um, our campground there was beautiful. We really enjoyed that place. Next was Sequoia National Park. Um, beautiful, uh, a little different than the Redwoods. Larger, I think. Sequoia had many different things that we did not take the time to see. If we go back, we will. Um, we only knew about the large trees, so that was what we were there to see. We spent our day visiting two of the groves in um, Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park and then we attended a ranger presentation where we learned that there was so much more that the park had to offer. So there are many things we could do if we go back. Personally, I enjoyed Sequoia more so than Redwood.
Next stop was uh, Las Vegas area where we went to see, uh, paid a visit to the Hoover Dam, a uh, historical landmark of America. So we uh, felt like we needed to definitely pay a visit to Hoover Dam and see the tour. And while we were in the area, we uh, paid a visit to Las Vegas and did some family friendly things in there. Uh, go check that out. We had a nice uh, surprise for, uh, for Brennan. Our present location is in Utah where we have visited Zion National Park. It was amazing. Um, we are going to be also visiting Bryce National Park while we're in Utah. And as you can see around us, the landscape is um, very unique. Not what we're accustomed to seeing back home. So we've been pretty wowed by everything that we've seen so far. Okay, now we want to talk to you about the national parks. We are really encouraging people to get out and visit our um, national parks. This country is amazingly beautiful and you can see a lot of that beauty just by visiting the parks where it's preserved. They're preserving it in its natural state. So before we start with our top three, we want to let you know that none of them have disappointed us so far. Everything has been amazing. They're all beautiful in different ways. So if you can see any of them, we encourage you to get out and do that. But we did pick our top three. And when we did it, we thought about if we were going to take our families to visit three parks and we only had time for three, which three would we visit? Now, remember, we've only visited 12 so far. So out of the 12 that we visited, our top three would be uh, Yellowstone National Park would be number one I think for for both of us and um, I think the main reason for Yellowstone is uh, its diversity um, it's very unique in its uh, hydrothermal features uh, the geysers uh, the mud pools uh, the hot springs um, I think I remember correctly it's the largest collection of those in the world uh, so that's amazing in and of itself. It's a super volcano. That was pretty cool. And we saw so much wildlife in Yellowstone. We were amazed by the um, animals that we were able to see while we were there. Yeah, uh, uh, wildlife is abundant. It's a very large park. Um, so if you, if you decide to visit Yellowstone, you should, should definitely block off a week. Uh, four to five days is what I would recommend to see the whole park. But yeah, Yellowstone is uh, is incredible. It's amazing. It, ha it has to be number one. It was the first national park. So what was number two? Number two is Grand Teton. I love Grand Teton. Um, I thought that the beauty was just breathtaking. Another good, another plus for me is that you can view from the valley because as much as I love seeing all the beautiful mountains, I am af afraid of heights. So I get really nervous on these mountain roads and we have seen so many mountains um, on our trip so far. So I've been nervous a lot of the time, but at Grand Teton, you can visit and view from the valley. It's actually um, a very beautiful site. It's not as big as Yellowstone, so it's not going to take as much time and they have a beautiful area where we took a hike called Schwalbacher Landing that was just absolutely amazing. You wanna add any to that? Um, I enjoyed, uh, like she said, with, the, with a lot of the mountains, uh, a lot of winding roads, um, very tight roads. So this was a nice break for me because it was in the valley. It was uh, wide open areas, nice straight roads uh, to drive. So that was kind of nice for me as well. And. Uh, just know that, like we said in the beginning, every national park is beautiful and, and they're all unique in their own way. They're different. So while Yellowstone is, is, is extremely beautiful and vast and incredible, Grand Teton's beauty 
is is amazing as well, but in a different way. So yeah, we really enjoyed uh, Grand Tetons. That would be number two for us. Number three? Number three is Glacier. <laughs> These are all three very close to each other. So if you were planning a trip, you could see all three of them together if you allowed enough time. But Glacier, um, it was a wow. Uh, yeah, for me, it would be the going to the Sun Road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a famous uh, piece of highway or road that um, is well known in Glacier. Uh, amazing at, at how it was constructed and when it was constructed and how they did it and engineered it. It's it's amazing and it's beautiful. The, the whole way is just uh, a beauty. I didn't see much of that part, but um, we did go up to Mini Glacier on our stay there and it was a beautiful hike by um, a hotel. For on this hike was probably one of the prettiest uh, views that we've seen. We've seen many, uh, but this was would be in the top 10 definitely of the, yeah. uh, the sites that we've seen that we were just in awe of the beauty. Now we're gonna tell you about our three favorite campgrounds so far. Um, campgrounds we've been in at least 25 now, and it's been in the western part of the United States. So that's all we have to go by at this point. 25. 25. So 10,000 miles, 13 states, 12 national parks, 25 campgrounds. Right? Right. Okay. That's right. So our top campground so far would have to be Henry's Lake State Park in Idaho. Which um, was a surprise. And that was a surprise. It, we weren't planning to go there. Um, it was something that, I can't remember how it came up, but we did end up getting two nights there. Um, the scenery around the state park is absolutely amazing. The wildlife that you can see there is incredible. It was spacious and clean and we loved everything about it. Very close to the west entrance of Yellowstone. Yes, so it would be very convenient if you were going to visit Yellowstone to stay at Henry's Lake State Park. Number two? What was number two? It's where we are now. Uh, um, yeah, this one was a pleasant surprise. What's the name of it again? Zion River Resort. Zion River Resort. It's, a, it's about 13 or so miles from the entrance of Zion National Park. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this campground is probably um, the most up-to-date that we've been in. It's, it's very clean, very spacious sites. All your uh, pads are concrete and you either have gravel or grass for your uh, living outdoor area. It has uh, very nice accommodations and amenities. Nice pool, probably the best gift shop we've seen. Very reasonably priced. Uh, just ex extremely clean. A nice park. It's been very enjoyable. And our third favorite would be Yosemite Lakes in Groveland, California. That is actually one of our Thousand Trails um, campgrounds. We spent um, 10 nights there. The campground was not as spacious between the sites, but we were located on a creek. They had putt-putt golf. They had really nice amenities with the um, playroom, uh, the game room. They had a camp store that was located conveniently to the campground. Um, Probably the best feature is the the water. Yeah, the water. The creek that where you can camp right on the creek. Now the only downside is that you don't have a cell phone while you're there. So we were 10 days without a cell phone. They did have Wi-Fi that you could purchase. We purchased the Wi-Fi because we teach online and we were able to text while we were there, but no, no cell phone, no cellular service. The last thing we wanna do is give a few recommendations. We have only been on the road since the end of May or beginning of June, and so I'm sure there's more full-timers out there who can make more recommendations, but we wanted to tell you some things that we've come across that we would like to recommend for anyone who's planning on the RV life. Number one. Uh, Gypsy Guide is an app that you can get on your smartphone and they offer a, a guide, a GPS a service uh, and doesn't use your cellular data, 
and it's a it's commentary as you drive through the national parks. Very informative. Uh, we learned a lot from the guide. He also points out uh, points of interest, maybe some things that you wouldn't know were even there. Um, so I highly recommend Gypsy Guide. It is offered for many of the uh, national parks that you visit. And that would be something that you don't have to be a full-time RVer to enjoy. If you're going to see a national park, you can use that app. It's like having your own tour guide right in the car with you. Yeah, you just turn it on as you drive on the path. It starts and stops on its own. It has markers uh, that are GPS specific, and it just gives you commentary as you drive through the national park. It is a paid app, but it's, it's relatively cheap. It averages about $5 per national park. Worth it. Our next recommendation would be Thousand Trails. Um, we have saved a lot of money on this trip using the Thousand Trails campground. You, you pay a fee, you can pay an annual fee and use it for one year. Um, with the program that we're in, you're limited, so you couldn't stay there like an entire month. But as long as you're moving from campground to campground and you leave a week in between, um, you can use the Thousand Trails campgrounds and you don't pay anything else. You've paid that one-time fee for the year. So that has saved us a lot of money. Um, we haven't found any that we would not stay in. They've all been suitable for our needs and saved us money. Another thing is Campendium. I've That's, this would be, she does most of the booking yeah. for the campground. So this is, this is her area. So Campendium is an app that you can check out the Wi-Fi at a campground, which is something we need. And you can check out the cell phone signal for your uh, specific carrier. So we are Verizon customers. We use Verizon, so I always make sure that there's a good Verizon signal or good Wi-Fi that's available so that we can teach online. We also use campground reviews for that. Both of those are very um, helpful when you're looking for that and they give you information about the campground even more than just the um, Wi-Fi accessibility. It gives you reviews of the campground, what other people have experienced there. And the next one is definitely yours. Okay, what is it? Facebook groups. Okay, I would recommend uh, using your social media to your advantage. Uh, like. Facebook, for example, there are many groups uh, that will fit into your hobby or your your special interest. For us, it was uh, camping. Um, I joined a lot of groups, the Grand Design, which is the uh, makers of our RV. Uh, so I joined uh, Grand Design groups, uh, full-time RVers, people who are traveling. Um, I connect with them on Instagram. Um, and YouTube channels. I learned a ton from watching YouTube, uh, watching full timers, uh, watching videos about uh, RVs and how, how they work and how to maintain RVs. Just tons of helpful advice and tips and useful information found from uh, social media. So definitely I encourage you, whatever your interest may be, uh, check out social media um, and, and learn from, from others. So if you have any questions about anything we've talked about, if you want more details, feel free to comment on this video or uh, send us a message on Facebook. We're, we're happy to address that in a future video um, or we can respond to you personally. We can be more specific if we know what you're wanting, wanting us to talk about. You could also give us some ideas of what you would like to see in our next video. We would appreciate that. Also, check out Marks and Parks with Brennan. If you want to see more detailed um, footage of our adventures, we are doing all of that on the Marks and Parks with Brennan uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, that's, that's really our feature YouTube channel. Uh, that's where we feature all the footage of our visits. Um, Cindy and Brennan do the research, and Brennan does the voiceovers and the commentary for the videos. So I uh, definitely encourage you to go check those out. Like I said, that's really where we're featuring our, our travels. Uh, interesting side note, uh, just to mention that a lot of the, the schools in our area are starting to use the videos in their classrooms to supplement their curriculum. So we're very excited about uh, 
our adventure is being able to help other others learn. So and that's been exciting. We are trying to keep his videos educational, trying to keep in mind um, the standards for our students of what they would need to know, what they would want to, um, what the teachers could use to make it teachable for your classroom. If there's anything you want us to cover, let us know. If you have used our videos or Brennan's videos in your classroom, please send us a picture. We'd be glad to feature you on our Facebook page. And that's it for... Where are we going next? Oh, next we are headed to Bryce National Canyon. No. No. Bryce Canyon. So where are we going uh, next? <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> where are we going next? Next we're going to Bryce National Park. Bryce Canyon. Okay, go ahead. Where are we going next? <laughs> we're going to Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon National Park. Look forward to that. We've heard a lot, a lot about it. Uh, I hear it's similar to Zion. After Bryce, we're going to I believe we're going to the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Maybe. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, see, we'll you there. see you guys there. I'm Cindy. I'm Roger. And we're changing, changing the, the view. view.